It's important to properly dispose of unwanted medication or sharps. MedProject offers free and convenient disposal options near you. To learn more, call 844-MEDPROJECT or visit medproject.org. News dump. Back at you right in your face with a big old news dump on a Monday or a goose day whenever you are listening. But today's dump, date dump, is dump November 28th. And Mac, it is Cyber Monday. But before we get to Cyber Monday, very quickly on Thanksgiving, I had myself a day. What did you do on Thanksgiving? Well, on Thanksgiving Eve, I was a real ease. What the fuck is that? <laughs> on Thanksgiving Eve, I was a real uh, shooby, got drunk. Next day, I was hung over until 4.30 in the afternoon. Yeah, I had the pleasure of drinking with you on Thanksgiving Eve. Uh, we had our 15-year reunion, which was not very well attended. Less than 15 people showed up. Um, you were, when I, when we parted ways, you were quite inebriated. Yeah. I can confirm. So, so I slept the next day until two 30, then <laughs> was, you know, pretty hung over. And then by the time that I was ready to eat, you know, when you're ready to eat and you're like, I want to eat everything, but right. the desserts were out and I'm like, mother mither is what I call her. Uh, where is the vanilla ice cream for this apple sure. pie? Sure. And sure, she said, sure. I didn't get any. Do people do that? What a monster. <laughs> Dude, you know that 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 feeling you're talking about, the hungover feeling, you're so hungry, wanting to eat, wanting to eat, and then you're almost too hungry to yeah. eat. You can only eat a few things, and you're like, I want to eat three pounds of food. I was so hungry, and I really wanted apple pie and vanilla ice cream. I went down to Walgreens. You know, Walgreens and CVS were both open. And I asked the uh, clerk there, I said, do you have any vanilla ice cream? And she said, someone just came in here and bought all of it. See, that's uh, a Walgreens and CVS. They're not chock full of ice cream. No. So they, they, it's a low inventory. So that's, yeah, that's tough. So, that's a tough day for you overall. You know what I did? I thought I was being clever. I bought a package of Klondike bars saying, I'll sure. just take the skin off and then I'll yep. put the ice cream on top of my pie. You know what the flavor is on the inside, the ice cream of the Klondike bar? What is it? Nothing. <laughs> just ice and sugar? Yeah. That's Pretty much. It, is. it was garbage. No, no flavor. Uh, that's a severe disappointment. I, uh, my Thanksgiving was fine. I didn't I, ask. Uh, you, you know what it was? You know what it is? This this week is like the biggest drinking week of the year for me. And I just need like a week off after this week. Because you have usually the Wednesday night, which everyone goes out. You have your Friday. I mean, your, your Thursday, which is obviously a big drinking day, Thanksgiving. And then the Friday, you obviously don't stop. You got a Saturday in there. Sunday's football. Next thing you know, by Monday, you're like, I need I need just to not talk to anyone for a day or two. And then just to follow up on a topic that we had a couple, maybe a week ago, about my father eating all of the skin off of my rotisserie chicken. Sure. I showed up to my parents' house, very, yeah. very hungover. He walked up to me with a plate of turkey skin, a full <laughs> plate, and he said, I saved this for you. And I said, wrong day. <laughs> He's trying to make amends. He clearly listens to the podcast and heard us talk about it. Now- is that now a thing in, in the Goo family where you're like, keep the birds away from Bill. He's going to eat all the skin. I feel like that might have always been a thing, and I just forgot about it. <laughs> news dump. <laughs> ah, terrible news. Horrible news. Rest in peace, Jason David Frank. Yeah, this is a tough one. And I think uh, for some of the population a little bit older than us, they don't quite get it. Uh, Jason David Frank, of course, was the original Green Ranger on Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, became the White Ranger, and eventually became several more Rangers and other iterations of Power Rangers. Um, he essentially became synonymous with the Power Ranger brand. Uh, he did all the Comic Cons, loved the interactions with fans. And the best way I can sort of describe what this is to Goo and I for those of you that aren't really a Power Rangers person or don't don't really know the impact of this, he was essentially like the first Captain America for a lot of us, right? Oh, yeah. You know, that Power Rangers universe ran deep. It was a shared universe. He connected it all. He gave it his all. So, yeah, when, when, when we were six years old, like the Green Ranger, Power Rangers was it. So, tough loss, 49 years old, suicide. Like, you know, it, it's November now. You know, it's important to remember mental health is always on people's minds or should be. Donate to Davies uh, Movember Fund if, if you have the means, but it's it's too bad, man. It, it the mental health thing is it affects everyone. You never know. You never know. They could be the the richest person in the world, the poorest person in the world. 
to me, I never saw signs of this, and I'm sure maybe family and friends never did. It's just a, it's a real bummer, that's for sure. Yeah, and just the first television event of my lifetime would be the Green with Evil five-part series on Power Rangers. Yeah, just so good. epic. Awesome, awesome. It, it's just, I guess, you know, part of the reason why, I mean, I think people love shared universes and stories that tie in anyways, but this was the first one that, like, really... Like when Power Rangers kept connecting to stuff, like this was the first one that really did it for us. It was so. a five day event. That's that's what it means to us, anyways. And then also the White Light episode when he becomes the White Ranger, also awesome. great. And then I just caught this because apparently this might have been his last episode. I'm not entirely sure. Don't quote me on this. But he was fighting himself, and the other version of himself was a machine or something. Uh, you know, CGI is not great, but. It was him with like a mega morpher or like a crazy thing where he could morph into any of his rangers. And he did I that throughout that the clip. entire fight. Pretty dope. Pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, there is a comic series as well. So obviously the Green Ranger and the White Ranger, the two he's most notable for. Lord um, Dracon. Yeah. There's a yeah. there's a comic run where the two characters are basically combined. And he's almost like an an evil overlord, uh, which is a pretty cool concept. And, and and those two Rangers look the coolest too. Yeah. The shield the is shield. what really did it. Yeah. So that's just, it's just, it sucks. Yeah. It sucks to know that when you think someone's thriving, they're not, and there's nothing you can do about it. Then obviously, you know, couple that with Kevin Conroy. These are two of my, you know, childhood yep. heroes. For sure. Yeah. News dump. Mac Andor has wrapped and apparently a great season. Yeah. I'll tell you what, it seems like everyone likes this. Borderline loves it. Loves it. And yeah. I'm not going to budge. I've been burned by Star Wars too many times, and I have a piss-poor attitude going into this anyway. So yeah. I'm just going to avoid it. If you liked it, I'm happy it was for you. I'm happy it fulfilled your desires and your needs. I just know I'm not going to like it as much as everyone else. Hashtag dork. That's their episode this week. Go listen to them. Yeah, may maybe if Andor ties into another show, maybe I'll go back and watch Andor. I just don't like Cassie and Andor. I don't like that there's no force users. I don't like that there's no lightsabers. So going into it, I just like it. If you liked it, liked it, I'm not going to watch it. Don't worry about me. I finally have some time this month. I am going to go ahead and watch the season within the next couple of days. I did try and start it a couple weeks ago. First couple episodes are incredibly slow. But <laughs> like I just said, I finally have time. And as long as my glasses, if they don't break... I'll be Where okay. Where are his glasses? He needs his glasses. I finally had time. Goo, 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 goo. What do you want? Are these hour-long episodes or are they 30 minutes? Almost hour. Wow. That's a long season of television. News dump. Back. Disney is set to lose $100 million on something called Strange World. Yeah, this is really bizarre to me, Goo. There has been basically zero promotion for the latest animated movie. From I Disney. just found out about it last week when it was coming out on that Thursday or that Friday. Yeah, we got a we actually got a screener invite like two weeks oh, ago. Oh, did we? Yeah, My I bad. didn't know what this was because there was zero promo. Um, so I'm like, I'm not gonna go see it. If they're not promoting it, it's clearly not that good. Also, one of the characters looks exactly like Wreck It Ralph, so that's distracting. They were expecting to make thirty to forty million on opening weekend. They made 12. They made 12 million. That's less than what they wanted. <laughs> yeah. One of the worst openings for a Disney movie in a long time. Um, so they're projecting to lose about $100 million on this, and that ain't great, Bob. That ain't great. Say what you want, but Marvel, Star Wars, missing the mark. If you make an animated movie that no one goes to see, you're losing lots of cake. News dump. Blade is back on. This is probably, uh, since we've last dumped, it's been a couple of weeks, a few weeks for me anyways. This is the biggest news of the last couple of weeks. Jan Demange, Demange, I don't know if I'm saying that, is set to direct relatively newer director. Michael Starberry, not of the Starberry shoe, tapped to write the new script. I don't know how much they'll be changing and whatnot. This still isn't set to come out until September 6th, 2020, 2024. So I'm personally wondering if we might see Blade before that and other stuff, because this got bumped back. Yeah. So I wonder if they're writing him out of stuff or if they're still going to use him in other stuff. I'm not really sure. I'm just happy it's still happening. Especially with all of our new spooky characters. Right, right. We're playing in a new sandbox here. That This tells me that the idea or the story they want to do is good enough that they, they're pushing it forward because they could have just totally scrapped it all together. Or they just need the character. Yeah, but you don't. You wouldn't need the origin. Really, they might you know? need the origin. I don't know. Everyone knows Blade. News dump. 
Uh, Quentin Tarantino has been all over the circuit promoting that he's doing a television show soon or he's going to do something like that, but he's been on some podcasts. He was on Stern. I think he wrote a book, too. Did he write a book? I think so. Something like that. Well, in his interviews, he pretty much said that right now we are in the worst era of Hollywood history. I understand what he's saying to a degree. Yeah. We're in we're in an unprecedented era in Hollywood history. We're in an era of uh not so much films. It's all about IPs. Yeah, but at the same time you have all these smaller independent studios thriving. Yeah. So he's also wrong too because you like you have studios like A24 having massive success making quote unquote films and we're still getting the massive blockbusters and at least in my view today's massive blockbusters have much better storytelling and writing than the old days, even the 90s. I get that maybe Tarantino's films, those types aren't doing as well, but those are the ones that middle it, right? Those are the big budget kind of indie-ish films. And what's he complaining about? He's still doing... Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is one of the best movies in the last five years. So yeah, I don't it was know, great. I don't understand really where he's coming from, to be quite honest with you. Well, he doesn't like the fact, and he said it in, I believe, Stern, where... A 15-year-old only knows Marvel movies and DC movies as what movies are, and they don't know other stuff. I mean, that's just not true. That's just not true. Uh, you know, as a child of parents, you grow up Wait, watching what? what your parents like. I'm a child of parents? You're a child of parents, Goo. So you would Is that know, a t-shirt now? As a child, of, a child parents. of parents. Unless you're an orphan. Can't At get that shirt. At least when I grew up. My parents showed me things they liked. Yeah. You know, and then I also watched what I like. So that's such a stupid statement to make. And he also said that part of the problem is there are no movie stars today because of the marvelization of Hollywood. So he's saying that, if that doesn't make sense to you, he's saying that um, there's no more superstar actors. It's just the characters that are popular. Bankable now. actors is what he's saying. Yeah. Sure, sure. First of all, he's completely wrong about that because a lot of these roles have turned people into bankable actors. And number two, has he ever heard of James Bond, Dracula? These fucking Dracula, Dracula. No, no Dracula is the best Dracula. one. Can someone please make a Dracula something? <laughs> James Bond has been around for seventy years. Yeah, These motherfuckers. Like, it, again, if you, he's just talking completely out of his ass, no backing, no basis to any of us. And again, I really do think it's the inverse. Like you have someone like Simu Liu who came out and spoke against this, who I did, I, I never ever would have heard of unless Shang Chi came out. So he just to make like a blanket statement like that is dumb. I he has some points to some things. He's not wrong to say that it's the worst in Hollywood history. I don't think Lord. it's the worst in Hollywood history. Also, like that undercuts amazing movies that have come out over the last five years. Yes, I have them written down here. Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, Uncut Gems, Jojo Rabbit, RRR, Barbarian, Black Phone, Judas and the Black Messiah, Nobody, Dune, which Dune is based off a book, but everyone seems to forget about that. Chicago 7, Knives Out, Rocket Man, Honey Boy, and dot, 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 dot. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And I also think like the major piece of what he's missing and why we actually like these movies that he's referring to, Goo, we're following these characters on long journeys, yes. you know? It's not one and done. It's a, it's a, a masterpiece in storytelling in some cases. We've become invested in these characters from 10 years ago, things that happened 10 years ago being still meaningful. It's very much like book readers who read the same series of books with the same characters over and over, you know? Or, dare I say, a comic book reader. Like, I, yeah. He, he doesn't understand that we want the tie-ins. We want things that happened to matter instead of these one-offs, you know, these these movies that don't mean anything because they don't connect to anything else. You know, I, I just, I think he really just doesn't understand. It's complete ignorance. It's sheer ignorance. And then one thing that Hollywood movies, at least, doesn't really have right now is the big tentpole comedies. But I feel like that's because they all went to television, where we now have critically acclaimed comedies where... They're both funny, but also extremely well-written. Shows like Atlanta, Better Call Saul, Curb Your Enthusiasm, Big Mouth, I Think You Should Leave, What We Do in the Shadows. So there's still a lot of great content. It just might not be on the big screen. Yeah, and I also think, you know, it's the same thing where it's really hard to create new comedies, new stand-up um, that isn't based on topical things because the idea has been done already. So all the best comedies, in my opinion, got made 
in basically our lifetime from the late 80s to the late 2000s. That 30 year span is all of the best comedies ever made, except for a few. You have like Dr. Strange Love and whatnot, but all of the best stuff got made. So it's really hard to live up to those standards and come up with new ideas. And you could also argue that starting, say, in 1999 with The Sopranos is this is the best era of television. Right. That's so true. And, and television has become cinematic in its yes. production. So, it, yeah, sure. Great. You know, we've lost a little bit on the big screen. We've gained a shit ton at home. Where you can tell these long stories. Right, right. And, and that ties back into getting invested in characters yeah. for long amounts of time instead of watching one two-hour movie. News down. Back, you had this. I didn't even see this anywhere, but Hush is set to be the main villain in the Batman 2. Can you please cite your sources? Yeah, so this is just complete internet rumors the last couple of days. Oh, good. Grand, great, wonderful. So, yeah, who knows how much you You're supposed to write in the headline, rumor has it. Um, Reeves has spoken about this character yeah. recently. And they also though. teased it in the movie. Yeah, and you're obviously a way bigger Batman guy than I. I don't know much about Hush. I know it's he's supposed to be a childhood friend or whatever. Yeah. I don't really care for this. I would prefer him take one of the bigger known ones and make him more grounded the way we saw the Riddler, right? Yeah. He made him less cartoonish and more of a real human. Whereas this guy already is very real human. Right. So that's... That's why it's going to be, I think, what we saw in the animated, roughly. Mm -hmm. I really like that he took a character we knew for being super outlandish and grounding that character in reality a little bit more. So I love that aspect about the Riddler. I'm sure Hush will be great. Reeves yeah, I'm sure this will be absolutely fantastic. Stuff. I would have preferred a Mr. Freeze story. I think a grounded Freeze would have been unbelievable. And then I also would have loved, because Reeves has a nice little touch with some spooky stuff, Scarecrow, Professor Pig, Clayface, and I know that we're getting some like one-off shows and stuff, but I think that would have been great in a movie too. Yeah, because Scarecrow was kind of bullshit in the. Dark they didn't Knight use trilogy. him enough, and yeah, they almost grounded him too much. You need to have that like light element of macabre. I didn't think he was menacing enough. Like the fear toxin was cool, but Killian Murphy just wasn't. I wanted him to be more of a threat than he actually was, I guess. And it, it just didn't do it. For yeah, me. but he's never physically a threat. He's always a very soft man. No, fair. And I get that that's kind of what the character looks like. I just was never scared of that character. And that's He was just a crow why, then. That's part of the reason why Batman Begins doesn't work for me, too. Beyond the 80 other reasons. So you prefer Beyond, Batman Beyond. <laughs> sure. News stuff. Lupita Nyong'o and Joseph Quinn are set to star in A Quiet Place Day 1. This will be a prequel to the two movies. Yeah, a prequel spin-off set in that universe. Obviously, we saw a little bit of Day 1 stuff in A Quiet Place 2. Um, Michael Sarnowski is set to write and direct this. He was the writer and director of Pig, which I did not see, but I know Goose on liked. If you don't know who Joseph Quinn is, he is the guy that played Eddie Munson in Stranger Things. Mm -hmm. So he's kind of the hot guy right now. Obviously, Lupita Nyong'o is unbelievable, so I'm I'm in on this. I have very much liked both Quiet Place movies. I know some people, you know, don't for certain reasons. Just say but, Keith. Just say Keith's a piece of shit. Well, yeah, Keith doesn't like it because of the baby. I don't. I don't even know if he saw the second one, but I like the idea. Uh, I like the universe they've set up, so I'm, I'm in, especially on a day one thing. News down. Mac, you see this? You hear about this? You watch this trailer? Eighty four Brady. Yeah, this is a very real movie, believe it or not, coming out February 3rd, Super Bowl weekend, 2023, based on a true story about how four old hags fucking went to the Super Bowl and saw Tom Brady beat the Falcons. I think it's the Falcons Super Bowl. Yeah. Brady and Gronk are in this, so I don't so know was an when Edelman. they- And Amandola. I don't know when they shot this. When did they shoot it? During the offseason. <laughs> it's going to be weird to see him in a Patriots jersey again. Uh, this stars Jane Fonda, Lily Tomlin, Sally Field, and Rita Moreno. As the so all the ads. hottest stars in the world. Give me your ranking one to four of them. Uh, Seymour, Field. Seymour. Jane Seymour? Jane Fonda. Whatever. Jane Why Seymour am I thinking of Seymour? Kitty cat. Kitty cat, meow. So Dr. Fonda, Quinn. Dr. Quinn Field, and then there's two more. Lily Tomlin, Rita Moreno. Morena, and then the other one. I would go Field, Fonda. Okay. Moreno, Tomlin. Tomlin's clear. But you wouldn't mind Fonda, Field. Tomlin actually looks ancient. The other three, you can figure it out. You could convince yourself. They should have dug up Estelle Getty. Fonda, looks, Fonda and Field still look great. I'm, I'm a sucker for Sally Field. 
That's weird. What do you mean that's weird? She's old, man. You just put Jane Fonda number one. She's like 84 years old. Fonda looks great for her age. And I'm pretty sure in this movie is going to bang Gronk. I hope so. That'd yeah. be nice. Show that I, I want full penny. That'd be crazy if Brady's first movie is sneaky a porno. <laughs> It'll be like Sylvester Stallone. News down. Mac, we got the Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special. We'll talk about it at the end of the week with some Christmassy cheer. And I'll tell you this right now, for 44 minutes, thought it was good. Yeah, it's out on Disney Plus right now. Um, I was, It was okay. My main takeaway is the side characters should remain side characters. But my main takeaway is if you don't have something that is fully fleshed out, just put it up there for 44 minutes and it's free. Who cares? Yeah, they really... There's not – if you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. You know, but I that's what it. I like about it, though, is that when you make these, you can say, if you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. That could be the – as opposed to the Marvel, like, tag at the beginning of the movies now, just have that be the thing. If you don't want to watch it, don't watch it. <laughs> Fair enough. News dump. Spirited is on Apple TV+, Plus, and I did not – have access to it at the point when I was about to watch a movie last night, so I did not watch it. Yeah, so this uh, is the other Christmas thing that came out this past week. This is the Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds musical. Yeah. And I I put it on yesterday morning and got home from work and fell asleep within the first 10 minutes. Nice. Not necessarily because of the movie, but because I was tired. So I didn't get a chance to watch it. This is over two hours, dude. How did we get a t- over two-hour musical here? Yeah, me and the wife opted to watch the 90-minute Freddie Prince Jr. I'm back and I'm doing Christmas movies. <laughs> is that a Hallmark movie? I think it is. I think it has something to do with Hallmark. Like, maybe it isn't on there right now, but it'll be on there next year. It's a Netflix sure. movie, oh. and his face looks like a beaten-up catcher's mitt. Well, him and SMG really go at it. Yeah. Know? A little rough, rough stuff. He there. really leans into the uh, Latino stuff, which I've never seen him do in the past. Um. Well, I think... Now, I'm speaking out of pocket here. I think when he was coming up, yeah. they really whitewashed him as an actor. Okay, that they makes didn't sense. Want him, I, didn't, I don't think they wanted him to be a Latino, but okay. he very clearly is. That makes a lot of sense. Mac, can you take more out of your pocket? <laughs> News down. <laughs> By the way, that movie's fucking terrible. <laughs> um, we got a trailer for Damien Chazelle's Babylon. Yeah, this is... Uh... Or is that Baby Lion? Baby Lawn. Baby Lawn. Sorry. Um, by the way, the the person that plays the uh, Grim Reaper in the Real Pharaoh Ryan Reynolds movie, the stand-in is Lauren Woods, former Arizona basketball great. It's like 7'3". I thought that was a little nice little tidbit from the IMDb page. Yeah, it was nice. Damien Chazelle of Whiplash, La La Land, and First Man fame. He also wrote 10 Cloverfield Lane, so this has been much anticipated for I the last couple of years. I preferred Sixth Man. Starring Marlon Wayans. Can I get your opinion? First of all, Babylon comes out December 23rd. Can I get your opinions, opinion on each Whiplash, La La Land, First Man? Whiplash is great. La La Land kind of stinks. Yeah, sucks. Yeah. I thought it sucked. Although Ryan Gosling did save jazz. Did you see First Man? No. Was that the Brad Pitt one? No, that was the Gosling as the astronaut one. I'm You're thinking, thinking of Brad Ad, Pitt. Ad Astra is yeah, the Brad Pitt. I'm one. thinking of Ad Astra. Yeah, I yeah. uh First Man was boring. Okay, good. Good. Ted Cloverfield Lane was great though. I like yeah. that. He didn't direct it though. So this is the next one from Chazelle. Uh it stars Marge Bob, Brad Pitt, Toby Maguire, Olivia Wilde, Samara it's a Weaving. Good cast. It sounds a lot like the one by uh what's his name that just came out and it sucked. With Christian Bale, yeah. yeah. Uh guess what, Goo? This is also a period piece. This is about 1920s Hollywood as it transitions from silent films uh, to bigger productions. Stop. <laughs> stop. No more Hollywood period pieces. Goo, this is either going to be amazing or terrible and nowhere in between. So like when you sit down, have they already finished on your seat or are they going to finish on your face during the movie? <laughs> uh, Marge Bob looks to be playing... Another outlandish character with a bit of a Harley Quinn accent. Brad Pitt's going to be awesome because he always is. Yeah. Tobey Maguire has done like, got a little makeup on him. I don't know, dude. This, again, this could be the best movie of the year, or I might leave 10 minutes in. News down. Back, we got a first poster for a Cocaine Bear based off a true story. An Elizabeth Banks movie starring Ray Liotta and Felicity. 
Yeah, Gary Russell. This is, I believe, Ray Liotta's last movie before he passed. What a time to go out. That's the one that you want to go out on, Cocaine Bear. Very, very fitting. This is obviously inspired by that wild story. I don't know how many years ago, but there was a drug runner whose plane crashes in the fucking forest, and a bear finds the massive amount of cocaine that was in the plane. Yeah. And then the bear goes on a cocaine rush. I don't know what it's called. Cocaine eye. I was really hoping for a madcap comedy, and apparently this is a thriller. It should be a dark comedy is what it should be. It might have been Davey who said that John Mulaney should be playing the bear. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that. It should be a little scary, right? Because a bear can kill people. But also a bear is high on cocaine. But the so bear should funny. talk, right? The bear should talk in the Give movie. Give me a talk bear. I agree. Yeah. News down. <laughs> Mac, what is coming out in the month of December? Uh, on the docket for December movies, Goo, we have the one you're looking forward to most. Violent Night on December 2nd. That is the David Harbour as a badass Santa movie. Yes. That's, uh, I'll probably skip that one. I'm, I'm going to pay money to see it. To see it. I'm not going to pay to see that one. Well, I am. Um, you know what I'm going to pay to see if we don't get a screener, which I'm sure we'll get a screener. The Whale comes out December 9th. This is the Brendan Fraser vehicle where he's like 800 pounds. Everyone was crying at the premiere. Brendan Fraser was crying because of the appraise. So I hope that's good. I hope mm -hmm. it's not overblown. Uh, December 16th, Goo. The movie that a weird amount of people are actually looking forward to. And first of all, I hope they lose hundreds of millions of dollars on this. Uh, Avatar The Way of Water. I'm blue, I've been I was told on Thanksgiving that it is my responsibility to see this movie. Oh, God, Goose. But they know you're not going to like it. So why would they put that on you? Because we're a movie review podcast. I know that, but they they should know you're not going to like it. I was also told to see it on drugs, and I'm like, that's not how this works. Yeah, take some shrooms. Get out there. Yeah, go Have there. Some. You know, take some take some Viagra and go watch the movie. <laughs> hey, it's a blue pill. It'll yeah. Work. I'm blue. I've been deep, I've been I don't think I've watched the original since 2009, which I believe was the year it came out. I've, I've got no desire to go back into that Avatar world. And that's, again, the James Cameron, Quentin Tarantino, all these fucking people. Total hypocrites. But I digress. Goo, the other one that comes out in December that might be good, might get some Oscar buzz, is the Whitney Houston biopic, I Want to Dance with Somebody. But it's by the same people as Bohemian Rhapsody, yes. correct? That's so why I'm kind of out on it. Also... The previews looked a little too glossy. She lived a very difficult for life. Sure. For sure. Yeah. I don't I don't foresee me liking it. But as Bohemian Rhapsody got praised, this probably will too. That's the week of Christmas. And then Goo, 1222, coming to streaming for free finally because it's made so much money, so they haven't given it to us for free. It's Top Gun Maverick. comes to Paramount+. Plus. So I will probably see it the week of Christmas for the first time. Don't even bother. If you didn't see it in the theater, you've been left out. Oh, damn, Nabbit. News down. A ah, quick reminder that next week, yes, already next week, December 7th, we'll be doing Nicolas Cage trivia at Idle Hands Craft Ales. Yes, I am very excited for this because we can get as weird and dumb as we want yeah. because that's what Nicolas Cage is. So, hey, come on down, 7 o'clock, 20 questions, one final question, bunch of middle bonus points, if you will. Anyone wearing a Nicolas Cage costume will get extra points. If you have props from a movie, bring those. We'll give you points for those, sure. If you have Nicolas Cage tattoos, points. We'll give you points if you're dressed as John Travolta as well. That counts. That's a costume from one of his movies. News dump. Mac, finally, it is Cyber Monday. Did you buy anything cool on Black Friday? No, I didn't get anything today or Friday. I don't know what it is about this year. There's nothing that's really grabbing my attention. There's nothing that says, hey, I need to go get it. On Black Friday, thank you for asking me, I got two of those vacuums. You know the ones that can just sense dirt and they go around the house and they clean for you? Oh, like little Roombas. So it's not Roomba. It is made by Shark. I named sure, mine sure. King Shark, and it's already cleaned my house. You bought two of them? I bought one of them as a gift. Okay. Fair they enough. were on sale for 50% off. Whoa, that's a nice deal. Yeah. I was going to say, I don't think, no offense to your house, I don't think your house was big enough for two shark vacuums. I live in a mansion. <laughs> what's uh, what's on the docket for Rafi? What's he asking for this year? 
Well, uh, let's see. He's asking for just fire trucks. It's all he says. No, uh, I got him a uh, Black & Decker child uh, tool set and like, like a that. bench so he yeah. can work on his cars. And he'll be already more useful than you with that stuff. I used to know tools. <laughs> I don't anymore. <laughs> and then uh, actually we're going to New York in two weeks or maybe actually next week. And there is a Toys R Us there, and there is an FAO Schwartz there. So we're going to let him run free. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. You're going to have as much fun as he will. Oh, absolutely. So. It's gonna, yeah. Dana's going to be trying to rein both of you in. She's You're like, both no, child you can't buy any more. <laughs> yeah. like, right, but, fine. Mom. Oh, please. <laughs> so that'll do it for this news dump. Catch us at the end of the week for some holiday fun. Now it's time for girls jumping on trampolines. It's important to properly dispose of unwanted medication or sharps. MedProject offers free and convenient disposal options near you. To learn more, call 844-MEDPROJECT or visit medproject.org.